Welcome to my very first rental property. Now, this is a video I've been putting off for a while now, so I think it's finally time I go over how I was able to buy this at 22 years old in cash, exactly what I did, how I saved the money, some mistakes I made, just everything laid out in this one video. So without further ado, let's head inside and get into it. Well, we actually can't head inside because I have tenants living there, so let's go back to the office and talk there. <sighs> So if you guys don't already know, I started making content on social media when I was 20 years old. And now prior to that, I would say from the ages of 18 to 21, I did any and everything to make money. I, I was in school at the time and I had a job working at CVS, but outside of that, I tried everything to make money. Drop shipping, ATM machines, trading, reselling, social media marketing, Amazon. I, I, I kid you not, anything you can think of, I legit tried it. Now majority ended up failing and some did decent, but even with everything, I think I made like like $13,000 at 18 and maybe like $16,000 when I was 19 and the majority of all that still coming from the job I had. But when I turned 20, I had gotten an internship at a law firm and started making some more money and this was the time that COVID broke out so school went online, my internship went online and now I had all this time all of a sudden. So I started making content on social media mainly on TikTok. I talk about why I started in another video but I think that year I made like 25,000 and still majority of that coming from my job or internship at the time. Now, the thing is amongst all those years, I legit saved everything down to the penny. Even though I didn't make a lot, I still saved. I, I had like a whole budget and everything and I wasn't really saving for anything because growing up, my parents always lived paycheck to paycheck and my thought was, okay, if I just save and save, it'll come to a point where maybe I can just take the money and invest it or just have enough lying around for emergencies. Now, when I turned 21, that that's when I started making some substantial money from social media and I was doing the same exact thing, just saving and saving just because with no reason why. What I actually used to do was any money that hit my bank account, I would withdraw all of it and I'd have like different envelopes for different things. So an envelope for gas or investing or just going out and I would put certain percentages of cash into each envelope because I had read somewhere that paying cash was harder to do mentally than just swiping a card. So I thought if I just use cash for everything, I wouldn't spend as much. But it got to a point where I couldn't keep all this money at my house. So I started leaving it in my bank account and it just kept growing and growing and growing. Now, some friends and family kind of knew I started making some more money and they would ask me, you know, what I do with it because I never flaunted. I never was dripped out in designer or just throwing my money around. And even when I did go out, I, I made sure the bill was correct or I didn't get charged twice. Just like the minor things that other people hate, I would care about. And I mean, yes, I, I got a couple things like I bought my Tesla and a Rolex, but even those at the time, I would say were more so investments for me. So for those four years, 18 to 21, I just just kept saving and saving and not spending anything. Now, I think the thing that also held me back from spending a lot of my money when I started making more from social media was my income wasn't guaranteed every month. It relied on a lot of different things. It, it wasn't like a salary from a nine to five job. So I didn't want to inflate my lifestyle where if something happens, I'm screwed. Plus my face was my income. So if anything ever happened to me, I'm screwed that way as well. And mind you, I would see like 50 to 70% swings in my monthly income. And it was scary because I had no guarantee that I was going to make money the next month. Like, from a nine to five job. So I knew, I knew I had to do something. I have all this money in my bank account now, but don't have anything guaranteed coming in. Now I had made other investments and other things at the time, but those weren't putting any money in my pocket now. Now I, I always knew that real estate was the way to go, but I thought it would require so much effort and research. And I thought there's just something, you know, you worry about later down the road when you're older, because all you see is old people in real estate. And also I was just scared because this was around the time of COVID and every week all you would hear is the housing market is going to crash. Home prices are going to go to zero and I didn't want to get stuck with something and lose all this money that I took years to save. Now, what had happened was towards the end of 2021, so this is when I was 21 years old and my income started to grow up a bit because of social media, I actually met this real estate agent that I watched online and I had no idea he was from Chicago where I live. Now, we met a couple more times after the original interaction and you know I honestly thought he would be that sleazy real estate person that's just trying to get to know me so I could buy or sell through him but boy was I completely wrong he legit gave me so much insight on the markets and how everything works and I was honestly just blown away of how much information he gave me for free so this just got me a little more interested in real estate but I was still hesitant to do anything then fast forward a couple months I think it was now February of 2022 the agent ended up doing his own very first flip and he invited me out and he showed me you know the before and after pictures just everything about the property and he said he was gonna make like 20 to 30k profit on it and I'm just like 
wow. I, and I asked him, you know, where he found this deal. And he said he found it on the MLS. And I was like, no, there is no way. And for those of you that don't know what the MLS is, it's, it's basically where all the homes are listed. So if you go to a website like Zillow or Realtor.com, all the homes you see on there are listed on the MLS. So I was shocked because I always thought the only way to get good deals in real estate was off market. So not listed on the MLS for everyone else to see. But he told me that you can find really good deals on the MLS too. And he finds them all the time because he works with their investors as well. And I think that was my initial push and realization that, okay, I got to get into real estate. I, I have someone that is super knowledgeable on this stuff who said he can help me along the whole process. I, I, I would legit be stupid if I didn't take him up on his offer. Now, because I was looking for that guaranteed income, I knew flipping wasn't for me. So he said, all you need to do is bring 25% down to the table and you're good. So theoretically, let's say a house costs $100,000, 25% down will be $25,000 plus another couple thousand for closing costs. And if you plan to do any renovations and I asked him, you know, what would be my return or how much money would I make back off this investment? Which <laughs> thinking back now was actually a really dumb question because it, it depends on a lot of things, you know, how much you're getting the property for the interest rate, the market rents. There's a lot of factors that go into determining if a rental is a good rental. Now, even though I was super nervous because I've never done anything like this before and we're dealing with lots of money, I was like, you know what? I can't keep doing this. I, I need to make this investment or some investment that can build this guaranteed income I'm looking for. So I told them, let's do it. So then we got to searching. We looked at maybe like 10 to 15 properties over the course of a couple of weeks and months. Now, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but there was legit no good deals out there because how hot the market was. The few that we ended up finding that, you know, were a little decent, we put the offers on them, but no one accepted mainly because the market was just so hot. People were bidding like 10, 20, $30,000 over for these properties. And he told me we're not going to overbid unless it was some crazy deal. So I trusted him and we just kept looking and looking and nothing good was coming up. And then one day, he calls me and he says, yo, there's this crazy condo deal just listed a couple hours ago and we need to go look at it now. So we went there the same day we checked it out because remember speed is crucial, especially in that type of market because things just kept selling so fast. And I think originally they wanted 93,000 for this condo, but after the place was fully renovated, it would be worth around 120 to 125. Now the place wasn't in the worst of conditions, but I knew a lot of people wouldn't want to stay here. I'll put some pictures of how it looked over here before, but also the thing is this place was like only five five minutes from where I live and I knew it was a great area. It was a hot rental market and I just had this gut feeling saying I need to get this property. Now, me having my immigrant roots, I didn't want to pay asking price. So I asked my agent, you know, what can we do to bring down the price? And he said, the only thing we can do in this type of market is bring cash to the table. That way we have some room of bringing the price down. And even then we don't know if they'll accept it. So I thought about it. I was like 93,000 cash would put me around $900 per month in cash flow after all expenses is is that really worth it? And then he told me something that I can do. And I was like, bro, how come I've never heard of this before? He told me what I can do is something called a cash out refinance. So basically I can pay cash for this property now and use that as leverage to bring down the price from the seller. And I'll also save a ton on closing costs. And then what you do is after you buy the place, then you go out and take out a mortgage on it after the fact. So after I buy the property cash, I can just go to the bank and be like, Hey bank, look, I own this property outright in cash and I want my money out of it. So the bank will do an appraisal on the property and whatever the property comes back being worth, you can get 75% of that value cut back to you in a check. And then you just start making that mortgage payment to the bank as you normally would have if you just took out a loan originally. Now, the reason it's 75% is because the other 25% is basically like your down payment, what you would have given if you took out a loan in the first place. Now, in my eyes, I thought this was a solid deal. I get the best of both worlds. I get leverage to bring down the price from the seller and I can just refinance the money back out at a later time whenever I need to. So we decided to put in an offer at 90,000 instead of 93,000 all cash on the same day. And I just had this weird feeling they would accept. And sure enough, they accepted the offer. Now, the thing that worked out perfectly with all of this was I was buying this condo from a landlord. So they already had tenants living there and those tenants were just planning on moving out because the landlord was selling the place to me. So what we did was just ask the tenants if she wants to stay another year because the previous landlord said she was an amazing tenant and she paid all her money on time. And I told her, you know, I was going to renovate the place anyway 
anyway, so you'd technically be getting a new place and you don't have to worry about finding a new spot. But the thing is, she was only paying $750 a month for rent when the market rent was $1,200. So what we said was, hey, look, you can stay here and not worry about moving out. We'll give you a whole new spot, completely new renovations, which I was going to do anyway, but your rent is going to increase to $1,250. And she agreed upon it right away. So at the day of closing, I already had a tenant living there and she gave me the security deposit the same day. So I didn't have to deal with any vacancies, which was amazing. But thinking back to it now, I, I kind of wish I did because I have no clue on how to vet a tenant and the process in finding one. So it would have been really cool to learn, but I'm sure the time for that will come in the future. Now, when it comes to the renovations, we estimated the work to cost us about $15,000 for materials and labors, but I was luckily able to get it all done for $12,000 and we didn't do anything crazy. We just did the flooring, uh, the cabinets and painting. I'll put pictures of how it looked before and after over here. But basically I bought the place for $90,000 cash. I put another $12,000 in, which puts me at $102,000 all in. And I'd estimate the property now to be worth around 120, 125 with all the renovations. And if I really wanted, I could just sell it and pocket like $10,000 profit after closing costs, or I can just collect the rental income, which was my whole point of doing this in the beginning. So just with the cash I have all in, which is $102,000 and the rental income coming out to $1,250, but after expenses coming out to $900, that puts me at around 11% return on my money every year, which is not bad at all. Now, it's been a couple months now and I still haven't refinanced out my cash yet, mainly because of these crazy interest rates. And I, I honestly don't know what to do either. I can refinance now and pay these ridiculous rates of six to 7%, or I can just wait for the rates to come down because I don't necessarily need the money right now. But yeah, the tenants are amazing. The contractors were super easy to deal with and they didn't break their budget. Overall, it was a super good experience all thanks to my agent because I legit would even have this property if it wasn't for him. And because of that, I'm already looking for more properties and trying to grow my portfolio even more. But overall, the lessons I learned from all this was that it was really crucial for me to save through all my years of working because if I just did what everybody else did and went out every weekend and just bought anything, I wouldn't have been in this position to get this property at a really good deal. And even now, I still save like crazy because you never know when a good opportunity will come up. And no matter what anyone says, if you have cash, you have all the leverage in the world because cash will always be king. And a bigger lesson than all of this is having a knowledgeable agent, especially one that deals with investors because they will legit make the process a hundred times easier. If any of you guys are from Chicago and want to know the agent I work with, I'll put the link to his Instagram down below. His name is Aram, legit the best in the game. But that's it. That was my story on how I was able to buy my very first rental property, the progress, the stuff I learned, and hopefully I can make more videos like this in the future. Also, real quick, I get a ton of questions on how I'm able to manage everything that I do. And the reason is, is because of Notion. In a world where there's just so much going on, it's hard to take control of your life and the things you do. And that's exactly what Notion is trying to solve. Think of it like being the go-to place for everything. Notion is a platform that takes your productivity to a whole new level. You can treat it as just a simple place to write out your thoughts, plan out your days, what you need to get done, or you can use it to run a whole business. And that's exactly what I do. It's just impossible for me to keep track of everything going on. So with Notion, I can keep track of what stages I'm in for a video or different things that need my attention or other ventures I'm currently working on. Instead of just piling everything in my head, I can create a whole organized system that's super easy to use. I promise you clearing your mind is the best thing you can do and Notion helps with that so much. So if you guys want to give it a shot and join all the other successful people I know that use Notion, you guys can sign up for free by clicking the link down below. But if you guys have any questions with all this real estate stuff, feel free to comment down below and also please smash that subscribe button. I make videos all about money, finance, and crypto and just my journey on how I'm making more money. I also have a newsletter where I share huge business trends months before they pop and just different ways to make money. So if you guys are interested in that as well, I'll put a link to it down below. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I really hope this video helped you guys out and I'll see you guys in next week's video. Peace.